Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be combining two styles, French country and folk, to create some beautiful thrift flips using the new IOD. If you like DIY and thrift flips, make sure you hit that subscribe button. For our first project, I'm going to be giving this lovely wooden box a makeover. It's beautiful as is, but I am not loving the florals on top. I want to give it an update. The paint on this box is raised, so I'm going to use my sander with some 220 grit sandpaper to try and even out the surface wherever the paint is. I'm probably not going to completely get rid of the florals. I just need to even it out so you won't see it underneath my paint. After cleaning, I'm going to be using Dixie Bell's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. This has a built-in stain blocker, so I know that any tannins are going to be blocked and not come through my beautiful cream paint. And I'm going to work my way around using a synthetic brush to apply two even coats. I'm lifting up the lid because I want to keep the inside of the box its original wood color. It's in great condition, so I'm going to try to preserve it. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description box below and you can grab those products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's new paint inlay, Trompe L'Oeil Blue. This is a beautiful four page inlay. So if you have not tried them before, this is a great one to start with. It has several elements, including these beautiful blue florals and then some other gorgeous matching elements. I think it's going to look great on my project. First, I'm going to cut out one of these little designs here. I'm going to be putting that on the top of my design and then I'm going to have a little look at how it's going to sit. I did decide to come in with my scissors and actually trim around the outside just to soften that line because you are going to be able to see it. So I just want it to be a little bit softer than harsh straight lines. So I'm trimming around the outside of it and then we're going to move on to applying it. To apply, you need to lay down a wet coat of paint. You need to make sure that you have a nice even coat, not too thin, not too thick. And then you're going to press your paint inlay design side down into the paint. Those grid lines should be facing up at you. Now I'm going around and I'm smoothing out my inlay. If you want it perfectly smooth, you could always wet it beforehand. Now I'm using my mister to dampen the inlay and a damp cloth to apply a little bit of pressure to make sure I have good contact. Once I have smoothed out my inlay, I'm going to take my hairdryer and I'm going to speed up the drying process just a little bit, particularly focusing around the outside. I love the extra texture and small cracks that this creates when I use silk mineral paint. You do not have to do this, you can let it dry naturally. Now I need to move on to the front. I do wanna put some of the inlay on the front, so I'm just testing out which design will be suitable and once I've picked that one out, I'm going to trim it off. Now I am probably going to have to end up trimming off the edges because of the width of the box. So here I'm just lining it up and then I'm going to use my fingernails to crease where I'm going to have to cut. Now that I have my inlay cut to size, I'm going to apply my paint the same as we did at the start. I'm going to apply the paint to the whole area just so that it's even. And then once I have a good coat down, I'm going to grab that inlay and very carefully position it in the center. I'm just doing this by eye. Then I'm going to carefully press it into the paint and smooth it down. Again, I am going to get wrinkles. I don't mind because I am going for a vintage look. I'm then going to use my mister to mist the inlay and that damp cloth again to make sure it has good contact. I'm going to speed up that drying process around the edges for a bit more texture. 
once my inlay is dry to the touch, I'm going to get my mister out again and dampen the inlay. I'm going to give it about 60 seconds and then I'm going to very gently start pulling it away. If I feel any resistance, I could always grab my mister again. You want to hold on to this because you will get another use, maybe another two uses out of this. Make sure you lay it somewhere flat to dry, paint side up. I'm repeating the same process for the inlay up the top, dampening the inlay, giving it that 60 seconds and then coming in and removing it. So if you like a vintage look, a weathered look, these are definitely for you because they can be a little bit unpredictable, but I love the unique weathered look that these inlays provide. They are so gorgeous. It's then recommended that you seal your inlay with a spray sealer to reduce the risk of smudging. I'm going to show you how I do this. I make a 50-50 mix of clear coat and water. I'm here pouring in some of my gloss clear coat into a little spray bottle, just as much as I need. And then once I have the amount that I want in there, I'm going to take some water and I'm going to pour the exact same amount of water as clear coat into my little container. So it's a 50% mix of clear coat and 50% water. I'm then going to put the lid on and shake it well. So I, this will store for a few weeks and then I just come in now and I spray over the top of my inlay. I'll do this a couple of times and that means that then when I come in with my brush on clear coat that it will reduce the risk of smearing. Now I want to soften the lines where my paint inlay were. So I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to soften the transition line. Just be gentle when you're doing this. Next, I'm going to distress the rest of my box. I'm going around all the edges and anywhere that I want it to appear worn. Now I can come in with that final coat of gloss clear coat to seal over my paint inlay. I've already misted my 50-50 mix over the top of this so it's not going to smudge and then it will be all sealed and protected. And here's our finished storage box. I'm so happy with how this turned out. That paint inlay is absolutely gorgeous. I can definitely see myself using it on a lot of projects in the future. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our next project is this lovely basket. For this project, I'm going to be using IOD's new Primitive Mold. I'm going to be using some resin. This is craft cast resin. I do usually use amazing casting resin. Same principle, I'm pouring part A out into a measuring cup, and then I'm going to need to pour part B out with the exact same amount. So exact same measurements for each, and then you combine them and stir them really well. This cures in about 10 to 15 minutes, so it definitely makes it easier to get your craft projects done pretty quick. So I have part A and part B together. Now I'm going to stir it really well and I'm going to be pouring my resin into the entire mold. I want to cast all of these because we're doing a few projects with this today. You can also use clay with these molds, but because of the project I'm doing today, I need the stability of the resin as opposed to clay. It will really just come down to what project you're working on. Once I have all of my molds cast, I need to work out my layout. I decided that this lovely flower would be the center, so I'm going to pull that one out and I want the bunnies to go either side. I love these little leaping bunnies. They're definitely my favorite part of the primitive mold. I'm using hot glue to attach my castings. You can always use super glue if you want. I think that hot glue is definitely going to be enough. Now, my casting was a little bit rigid because I'd waited a bit long, so I'm using my heat gun to soften it a little bit and then adding a bit more glue where needed. Once I have that down, I'm going to add some glue to the back of my rabbits and position them in place. 
If you wanted to do something similar with the basket that you have, but maybe the folk art look isn't for you, remember IOD has a lot of gorgeous molds that you could do this with. I then decided that I wanted to add some elements down the bottom. So I'm going to grab these two larger fronds, I guess you could call them. And I wanna have something in the center. So I've taken this little star flower. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, sorry. I've added some glue and I'm gluing that in the center. And then I'm going to add the little fronds either side. So from what I have gathered in doing my research on folk art, it is all about symmetry. And so I've really tried to think about this while I was putting my composition together. Once I had all my castings glued down, I'm taking some of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint, I'm dabbing off the excess, and now I'm going to be doing some dry brushing over the entire basket. I really feel like doing this will help bring those tones together and really help it make it look a bit more like a cohesive project. Once I've finished dry brushing the outside, I'm going to repeat the same process on the inside of the basket and on the bottom as well. I was happy with how this was looking, but felt like I really wanted to blend those molds in just a little bit more. So now I'm coming in with some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax. I'm going to add this warm brown tone to each of the castings. I'm wiping back the excess and I really feel like this is bringing those tones together and again, just making it look like those pieces belong together. I'm using wax, but if you do not have access to wax, you could also achieve a similar look with a paint wash or a glaze perhaps. And again, it just depends what look you're going for. I did white dry brushing on this, but maybe you prefer a gray tone. So you would use a gray paint for your dry brushing and then use a gray wax or a gray paint wash to try and blend your molds together. Next, I'm going to come in with just a little bit more of my buttercream on my brush and I'm going to be doing a bit more dry brushing. Again, this is just going to really help those tones blend together and it's also going to catch some of those high points to highlight the details. Once my paint is dry, I'll seal the entire basket with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. And here's our finished basket. I love how this turned out. I feel like those castings really look like they're a part of that basket now. And I think it definitely gives not just folk art, but definitely French country vibes. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our final project is this wooden plaque that I found at the thrift store. It already had a cute little terracotta pot glued onto it. My first step is to remove that foam that was hot glued in place. So I'm using a flathead screwdriver just to get out as much of that foam as possible. And then I am going to have to use my heat gun to heat up that glue so that I can get in and really get rid of any of that foam residue. Next, I'm going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Latte Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a limited edition full color. So if you cannot get it, French Linen in Dixie Belle's Chalk Mineral range is also a beautiful choice. I started off thinking that I was going to just paint the center of the plaque that we've got here today, but I decided that it was just going to be a little bit too overwhelming to have that very thick brown frame with the look that I was going for. So I did decide in the end to actually paint the entire plaque artwork, whatever you want to call this, in that latte chalk mineral paint. Now 
Now I'm going to use more of the primitive castings that we already cast earlier. And here I'm just having a bit of a play with the composition. And again, I'm thinking about that symmetry and I really like the color that the resin is. It's an off-white sort of a tone and I think it goes really nicely on top of that latte. So I'm not going to paint those. Now I have my layout sorted, I'm going to start attaching the castings. I'm using that hot glue again and I'm very carefully adding the glue to the back and then laying my castings into position. Definitely be careful while you're doing this. In the new release, IOD also came out with a stamp called Pennsylvania Folk and it has some similar designs to this. So if you don't have access to the primitive mold, but maybe you grabbed the Pennsylvania Folk stamp, you could perhaps create something similar using that instead. If you don't have access to any of the new products, remember IOD has a bird song mold so you could use the birds from that they also have several floral molds including the he loves me mold that has leaves and the rosettes mold so you could definitely have a play and achieve that folk art look if you only have those molds on hand Once I have all of my pieces glued down, I'm going to come in with a baby wipe and I'm going to do some wet distressing just to bring back a hint of that wood frame. While I was wet distressing, I did decide that I wanted to tie that little pot in a bit more. So I'm using some of Dixie Belle's buttercream chalk mineral paint on a small artist brush and I'm going to come in and paint the details on the pot. There's a lovely little bow that's a raised detail on there. So it's making painting this a lot easier. And I just feel like adding this similar cream tone really then brings the whole piece together and definitely balances it out. Once my paint is completely dry, I'm going to seal the entire artwork with Dixie Belle's Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I've shaken it really well and now I'm going to spray the entire thing. And once I have a really good coat on, I'm going to take a microfiber cloth to buff the wax in. And here's our finished folk artwork. I love how this turned out. I think it's a very cute piece and I definitely had fun using that primitive mold. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that it's inspired you to check out the new summer 2023 IOD range. There are so many beautiful products in this range that's sure to suit your style. Let me know what you thought of today's projects and if you had a favorite in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you're not already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.